Hey there, Jake from BH, and today we're going to cover some simple techniques for YouTube lighting. If you're just starting out or stuck in your room, like many of us are, more than likely the lighting in your room sucks. If you make videos on YouTube, like me, lighting helps you look more professional. It sets a mood and gives you a presence on screen. The tried and true method for lighting a subject is called three-point lighting. Now, what that means is there are three lights used, positioned in different places to make you look three-dimensional, hence the three points. First, you have a key light. This is the main light used to light your subject. Uh, typically, you position your key light camera right at a 45 degree angle of you or your subject. I also want to mention that you can use window light as a key light as it is a great free source of light just sitting up there in the sky waiting to be used. It can provide you with some soft looking and very pleasing light if it's bouncing off walls or you have some curtains to help you diffuse it. But remember, natural light is unpredictable because the sun may at times become hidden by some clouds. Also, your time of day will determine how the light will fall and how intense the light will be. So keep in mind how much time you have of usable light. Now, if you use continuous lights, you don't have to really worry about any of this. So let's get back to our YouTube lighting setup. Next, you have the fill light. And what this does is exactly that. It fills in the shadows created by our key light. Typically, you place this light at about a 90 degree angle of your subject. Last is the backlight, which provides you with an outline of light behind you to separate you from your background. Now, if you are someone who typically uses a higher backed chair, <laughs> like me, or a gamer chair, you may not have the space to use one because the higher back of these chairs would block your hair light or you actually have really no space left to go. Uh, that's okay because your choice of wardrobe will help solve this problem. All a backlight really does is help create separation. Uh, wearing a contrasting color will help you achieve that separation just fine. So for instance, if your high back chair is black, don't wear a black shirt. Instead, wear something colorful and light that will stand out against the black colored chair. I also want to talk about what is called a practical light. Uh, these are lights that are typically seen in the frame because they're part of the scene itself. Uh, they're not hidden off screen like three point lighting. Rather, they are used in the frame to create depth. Uh, this could be anything like a string LED bulbs hung in the background, a single desk lamp shine into a corner, or a very popular practical light I see on YouTube all the time is a neon sign of someone's logo or their name. Your only limitation is your imagination, but you know, don't overdo it. You don't want your audience to become distracted by your practical lights. So let's give this a shot with some products to help you get started. I got my hands on uh, three relatively affordable lights for this example. For our key light, we're using the Generate Spectro LED Essential 365 Daylight LED light, and I attached the included diffusion on the front to help make the light softer on my face. Diffusion is necessary to achieve a more flattering look. To fill in the shadows, I'm going to be using this little Generate Powerback 96 pocket LED light. I've mounted it here on a stand and it's easy to handle and surprisingly powerful. For the practical light, I'm using a cello. Uh, what's cool about this light is it's uh, RGB, so I can dial just about any color I want on the light to set the mood that's needed. Due to my bedroom size restrictions and high back computer chair, I am unable to use a backlight to separate me, but I wore a light colored shirt that creates the separation instead, as I mentioned. So let's go ahead and turn on each light one at a time so you can see what the light is doing. We'll start with the key light. So this is me lit with just the key light. It doesn't look terrible, but it kind of feels a little what we call sourcey. So you can kind of tell like where the light's coming from. So let's try to balance it out with the fill light. There we go. And the fill light fills me in just like that. Check on my monitor here. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, and then last but not least is the practical. I have the cello back here behind my computer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And there you go, that is your three-point lighting. Wham, bam, boom. As much as lights and light placement is important, control of unwanted light is just as important. Uh, case in point, uh, my windows. Uh, I have black shades that I tape down to the wall with painter's tape 
to prevent the sun from leaking into the shot and ruining the ratio that I created as well as, you know, ruining the color of the practical. It's a simple and cheap solution for controlling the window light, uh, but it's essential. There are, of course, many more ways to do this and you can create even more complicated setups down the line depending on the sort of look that you want but I wanted to show you a really quick and easy setup to help you get started with lights that I thought were pretty affordable. So what are some of your favorite ways to light your videos and what are you using? I wanna know. Let me know in the comments below. This is Jake from B&H, just keep rolling.